All right, April 25th. Uh, let's get through this tax month of April. Some of you may got a refund. Some of you, like me, may owe the government some money, which I'm sure they will use wisely to better the people of this country. <laughs> anyway, enough about that crap. What are we doing? Well, like I said, I'm not going to really do much on the CPU mining or the GPU mining stuff. That's an RIP moment. That's let that puppy rest for now. There, for me, there's no profitability, no interest in pursuing it. Uh, the noise, the heat, even though CPUs, they still put off a bit of noise and some heat. Uh, GPUs are way worse, man. I'm sorry. I've been through that hell. I'll never go back to GPU mining. And I have put a couple more GPUs up on eBay of all places. I know better than fake book marketplace where you have to go meet people and get robbed or whatever. But uh, eBay's fine. 14% fee. And I'll see if I can unload some of those turds before they become uh, um, worthless, right? But yeah, unload those GPUs. And that's about all I have to say about the CPU, GPU mining stuff. It had a purpose, but I don't know if the profitability is going to come back on any of this stuff. I was actually mining Zergpool, and those little bastards, they have a minimum payout um, of some Merton. I forget, I was mining various coins to get paid in Bitcoin. And I was, you know, ratcheting up the percentage I made to get to the payout. Then they freaking changed the whole payout scheme and increased it. I'll never get my payout. I said, F this turd, Zerg pull is run by a bunch of uh, commies. And they just did that on purpose to, to basically screw over a lot of uh, miners. Um, not too happy with that. So there's like, not much, but say 30 bucks in Bitcoin sitting out on their site, which I'll never get. Uh, that's why you got to watch these bastards, man. Everyone's out to rob you. You got to be... You got to be smart where you're mining, where you're putting your crypto, where you're buying your crypto. It's 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 a hellacious freaking environment, man. Wild West. But uh, I don't know why I clicked on that. What is that? I clicked on an ad. I hate ads. Let's get rid of it. Oh, my God. Close your eyes. I don't know what that's about. Let's go to that screen. Um, let's go back. So let's just talk about stocks. And I did another video earlier. I'm still pissed about the Zerg pool thing. Yeah, you got to watch it, man. Let's, let's, let's beat them up a bit. Uh, I thought Unmindable was shady, but Zergpool, they're one of the worst people, worst freaking mining platforms out there. The, to pull a, sh to sh a shitty stunt like that, uh, to change the payout, especially after mining rewards and profitability goes down, they up the limit to basically hold your Bitcoin captive. I'll never get that. I mean, it just makes you angry. If I could find out where these people are, I would go try to do a nice little visit, knock on the door and have a little conversation going, what's up, bro, brother? You know, it's just ridiculous. It makes you angry, man. I just hate when people steal from you. Oh, well, but that's the way of the world today. Hey, anyway, let's go on. Let's talk about some of this stock crap. <clears throat> what am I doing? This is for entertainment purposes only, folks. As I say over and over again, Doubt, but verify. Go do your own research. What the hell does that mean? Go read, read uh, articles from reputable, reputable places, reputable sources. Read many. Because what you can do is then start to see a theme, pull out the useful information, and make your own decisions on what you want to do. Uh, stuff like Seeking Alpha and Morningstar are suspect. They are, from, they are with the big boys. They're part of the big club that we ain't in, and they're going to kind of steer you and use propaganda to make you do stuff you don't want to do. Same with that stupid James Kramer and Squawk Box and CNBC. I would steer clear of those idiots. Uh, go to other sources for uh, learning about trading and stuff and even crypto. Investopedia.com is pretty good. But again, like I said, stay away from Seeking Alpha, Morningstar, CNBC, even this crappy Apple app. All the news is biased and propaganda to steer you into a certain action. And I've seen it before and you have to... Be very careful. Like, oh my God, Tesla's tanking. It's going to oblivion. It's going to zero. Oh my, then you're thinking, well, should I just take my 30% loss and be thankful? No, they want you to sell. Because what happened? Look at Tesla. It's been up over. It was dead. It was down here. Now it's back up. It went down to the 150s and lower. And now the thing's right back up here. They wanted you to sell so you, they could buy up your shares. And yeah, it's ridiculous. So just watch what you listen to. Uh, go with your gut. and I don't know. You just got to be careful out there. 
also on other YouTube channels and that um, you guys should already know this. Just if someone's pushing a membership, a course, education, um, don't do it. You don't need to. If you want to give a guy a super chat, whatever, know that what's that place? YouTube takes 30 percent of a super chat. That's fine. I don't care about that. <clears throat> but when they want you to sign up for their membership services, which may be yearly, that's where the money is in making a, making a successful business sometimes is in memberships because people forget they have a membership and they don't look at their credit cards and you get a yearly charge and uh, you don't notice it. But the companies keep you know making that constant revenue without you knowing it. Uh, you may have forgotten about the service and they're counting on it as well. So you may even buy into a service or a membership for $3.99 and then that's the lowest tier and then they have a higher tier at $9.99. Most times you buy into the low tier, they will bill you for the high tier. You got to watch it, especially on YouTube channels uh, that push classes and courses like that. So yeah, I'll definitely watch that. And then what they'll do too is um, you'll find maybe you'll get the product or this service or the information that you overpaid for that you could have readily discovered yourself if you sat your butt down for a couple hours and done some research. But you'll find that you, the information is useless, doesn't make any sense, but now you're out 999 bucks that you thought you paid 399. Oh, then you forget about it. Okay, you're a sucker, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna use this. Uh, happens all the time, especially with financial stuff. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, you'll buy a newsletter and stuff and you'll look at it for a month and go, all right, then you lose interest. So you got to watch it. I have one outstanding. I did get through a fidelity thing. Uh, it was actually useful, but it wasn't through an internet. It wasn't through YouTube. It was a private group. Uh, and I, I made sure I got to dump that. So, but it wasn't a YouTube course thing or anything like that, but you have to watch it because what happens is they'll bill you at 399 or they'll, you'll want the 399 course. They'll send you all this crap. You don't, it doesn't make any sense or is useless. And you get billed at $9.99. You won't catch it because most people don't look at their statements. And a year rolls by after you totally forgot about it and you get billed again. You won't notice it because you don't look at your statements and you see how the game works. Uh, truth is, if, you, if people are really successful at what they're pushing, the money isn't in what their, their, their uh, content or their methods. Uh, they're, the money that they're making is from the courses, dudes. And that's where it's at. If these people were truly successful, they wouldn't be on YouTube making videos every day. Come on, man. They have better things. If they were truly making lots of money with their methods, their algorithms, trading advice, social advice, business advice, they would not be pushing the crap on YouTube. Come on. It's, it's, it's a, YouTube's a popular grift. Just be careful out there. Don't buy any courses. Don't buy anything through YouTube. That's my recommendation. The stuff is readily available. People will say, but we aggregated the stuff for you and saved you lots of time. Yeah, so what? It's 999 bucks, dude. I can spend two hours and figure it out, right? That's my advice. You just be real. Keep it real. Do the work yourself. People are freaking lazy today. They don't want to go do the work. They just want someone else to do it for them. And you want willingly give them your credit card information, which is crazy in and of itself. All right, let's get into it. We are eight minutes in. So what have I been doing? All right, we talked about four different ways to get into Bitcoin and maybe profit from it. In another video, watch that. That's a couple of days ago. Uh, I put my money where my mouth is. As uh, most people won't, go to this bullshit and talk about stuff. But I have, uh, I do have a uh, Bitcoin right here, and uh, I do hold Bitcoin. I also have a little bit of this uh, Fidelity Bitcoin. That's an ETF. That's through a Roth, so I don't have to worry about the freaking tax implications of short-term, long-term capital gains. It's all purchased through my law, a Roth, but if I lose money too, I can't write it off, so it's not a, I can't report it as a loss. Um, let's see what else is in the... Uh, oh, this one down here is Misty, which is, I mentioned before, is these uh yield max they have these ETFs so highly volatile but you get a great dividend you have to go look what they are they're pretty high uh you can go through these these trade options on the bitcoin as well and this one it happens to be through uh MSTR let's go look at it real quick here blink I don't know where this is going to take us where will this take us 
takes us to Yahoo. I'm always Yahoo's still around, man. I think the only good thing about Yahoo is their finance page. Everything else is kind of crap. Uh, Morningstar. Is it Morningstar? No. I, I'm such a fool, man. Uh, MicroStrategy. I always forget that name. It's that Michael Saylor guy. So MicroStrategy, it, it, pay, uh, it basically is, you're not buying the MicroStrategy company stock. It's just through options you're buying this crap. So you can go look at this. And uh, this is one option as well. I own a little bit of this as well, but I'm down a little, down a bit. There's a, I don't know, expense ratio is kind of high. Well, not terrible, but it's kind of high. You got to watch that. So, yeah, we'll see. Where's the dividend on this puppy? Uh, let's see. Where is the dividend? Da, 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 da. I don't see it. Do you see it? I'm, not, I'm just not seeing it on here. I hate when I freaking make it difficult. Year to date return, 8%. Holdings, top one holding, First American Funds, Government Obligation Fund. Okay. Shows you the holding they're doing. And I'm trying to find a dividend for you guys. I am sorry, man. Options, chart, summary, performance. I don't know. Let's try performance. Performance. Do, 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 do. Ba, 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 ba. Trailer returns. 16 that's a return oh my god there's it the, why isn't why are they not showing the yield if you go to the yield max page do a google on that there's a website it'll show you the returns on these things so div, the dividend uh so there's that uh let's oh then the other thing i wanted to show you is bum, bum, bum. wolf and the miner is the other one i bought i was up hugely up here Again, the stuff always pulls back. When you're happy with a profit, don't get greedy. Um, take the double. Take the double. Put that money in your bank, and you'll accrue more dollars. Uh, I didn't. I, I kind of didn't know they're going to release a freaking GDP number uh, today, which they said the world is okay. the world isn't perfect. The economy, but it's okay. And of course, everything tanks with it. It's like, oh my god, I didn't expect that. So I should have set my uh, sell limit. And then just took took the money and run and then bought back in. Crap usually pulls back. It goes up. You get an all-time high or near high. Just take the freaking profit. Boom. It'll drop back. And if you want, buy back in. Uh, that just seems it seems to be the norm lately. So you got to watch that. Ah, uh, Yeah, that was stupid. So I'm, I'm still up, but not usually. See, I'm back down to here. So we'll see what happens. Again, I, sh I, I took my eye off the ball for one freaking day. I was so happy it was up almost 20%. And just took. I got distracted on one of these other things I bought. I bought some in, into this energy sector thing, because uh, once money leaves the tech world, it'll move either into bonds or energy. And uh, with these energy ETFs, they pretty much hold all the energy companies like Exxon Mobil and stuff like that. So typically, money will leave tech, which is leaving hugely right now, massively. And then they're going to roll it into um, the bonds. Won't be there because I don't know. They just can't support the bond. And then they're probably just rolling into energy. And then after that, I think the whole economy collapses. So you can still probably make money with energy for another quarter or so. And blammo, it all falls out, right? That's what I think is going to happen. They're holding it up for this election, uh, this shame of an election, which they probably already have in the bag. Uh, you just don't know anymore. Um, it's like George Carlin said, they give you the illusion of voting just to keep you happy. They act like your vote counts. It doesn't. It's just a, basically an opiate for the masses to think you're actually making a difference when it's a big club and we ain't in it is the real truth. Um, you got to just be, wake up to that as well. It's all a game. The, tr the trick is, like I said, make those doubles and get out, put the cash in your account and re rinse and repeat. And I screwed up on this one. Like I said, I didn't think it would roll that quick. It was going so well. And then boom, next day, it's just irked me. That was just one day difference. Things are moving so uh, fast now. It's like you just... You just don't wait a week and then make another trade. It's like, oh my God, I made a trade. I'm in, it's up. And now you got to get ready for like within an hour or that trading day or the next trading day to get out uh, if you're doing well, because it's just something's going to come out and then a knee jerk reaction or everything tanks. It's just ridiculous right now. But if, you, if you're on it, if you have time, you can probably profit from it. Um, like I said, I'm still up, but not as the way I was on this minor. And uh, Misty, I have that. 
TLTW is one of those iShare bond things, but look at the yield on that. It's tanked, but you get a decent yield. So if you're comfortable with the low price, you can buy in. If you think bonds are going to be okay, you can get in and get 20% on your money versus a 5% in a money market. But with anything, there's always the risk, right? All right, there's that one. Uh, let's see. Here's another energy transfer company. This thing's kind of going up. You got an 8%. On that, that's another option. Or you buy the energy uh, ETF thing. Uh, XLE does not have ET as one of its holdings. And then there's another one, EPD, which is a, uh, it's a, like a, how do you call it? A shipping, a transportation of, of uh, energy, like pipelines and stuff like that. And uh, they do quite well. They were up here. They can't, you know, correct a little bit. Again, with, it's, it's all within a buck. But uh, they pay a 7% dividend. Uh, not too bad. So better than 5% on a money market. But I think as this quarter goes on, as we get into the closer to the third quarter, I don't know, man. You might, I don't know. Just heavy cash position. That's, that's I think, a lot of the billionaires are doing is getting out and putting everything into cash right now, trying to see what happens. Or they're going to roll it into Bitcoin. Because we did have the having, not the having, the having. And uh, we are sitting at 64, 249. I think it's just find this little sweet spot. Look at this. See this going all the way across here? It's like 64, it seems to be the happy norm. And we had that flash crash, which was, what was causing that? I forget what they're saying. It wasn't grayscale, everyone leaving grayscale and then dumping their Bitcoin because everyone left grayscale due to their massively high fees. The people got greedy at grayscale, idiots. So I think a lot of people left there and went to uh, BlackRock, Vanguard, and Fidelity uh, for their um, ETFs, the Bitcoin ETFs. Fidelity is uh, transaction free right now until August just to get people into the fund. So that's a nice little marketing thing right there for them. Where's Grayscale? Grayscale was just charging massive fees right off the top. Yeah, greed. Greed, greed, greed. And it's, it cost them. And of course, it caused a flash crash. I can't remember what the other one was the flash. Was it the miners? It might have been the miners dumping Bitcoin for cash, and it caused the flash crash last week. So I, there's an article out there. You just got to go dig that up. But it's funny. If you go to Daily Hodl, D-A-L-Y-H-O-D-L.com, they have a lot of good articles on stuff like that. Again, a lot of this stuff says in these articles about anything, about any crypto, it could go up, it could go down, it could go sideways, or it could do nothing at all. You basically... Like I said, doubt but verify. Treat it as entertainment only. Because most times you lose your money. You don't really make your money. Uh, but some of the stuff, if you do the minor, like I said, where's the wolf? Woof. Woof. With woof. Get this damn thing loads. There we go. It was up here and I was up 20%. A couple bucks in my pocket, but I didn't set my cell. And then the next day, I just wasn't prepared. And I uh, had focused on something else. Lost, lost, uh, took my eye off the prize. And then cost me some percentage, but I'm still holding it. Uh, let's go look at Trading View. If you this is a stupid Apple thing, it's quick and dirty because sometimes I can just look real quick at it and look at after hours and pre hours and stuff. But there's also Trading View desktop app, which I recommend. Yeah, stupid ad. Get rid of the ad. And on the right here, you can see the stuff I'm following. Uh, Bitcoin, of course. You can click on that. And you can get the little, I do a four hour window, which is more readable than one hour or one minute. So just, you know, wow. See, we had a nice little, nice little, little transaction here from what, 60, this was what, on the 24th and we're at the what, the 26th now? Yeah. So we had a nice little bam, spike down, big red, big red bar, big red volume. And that puts us back at that uh, 64K level. Let's see. We got FCX, which is a copper miner, which should be up. Yeah, it went up. I think I this one I did time well. And I said, I just went, I'm just going to put a sell limit order at, say, 52. Boom, I hit it. I did nice. It was fun. Made some money on that. That was a win. When you get a win like that, it's a nice double. You know, it's not a grand slam. It's not a home run. But it was a double. I was like, ah, there's some more money. Now I got some more money I can invest in other things or buy back into this thing when it pulls back. So it's your choice. 
Oh, what is this? This is that uh, Fidelity ETF. Yeah, again, this follows the price of Bitcoin, so no surprise there. It's it. Well, did it finish barely up one percent for the day tracking Bitcoin price? Uh, yeah, there you go on that. Tesla again. If you believe the news and all this crap, they would have had me selling at the bottom down here at one thirty-eight or some ridiculous amount. But now look, it's back to one seventy. Still crappy. Still down forty percent for the year all-time high. That's a lot. But uh, better than 55%. So we'll see what this little turd does. I don't know, man. I think the EV world is done. When you see all the stuff I mentioned before, just the lack of infrastructure, the insurance companies not really wanting to cover EVs because one ding, the cost of repair it outweighs the price of the vehicle. So it becomes a total. Any damage to the battery pack, uh, it's dangerous. You could have a thermal runaway. Or you can never put the fire out. You put it out, the fire department takes tons of water and foam or whatever. The tow trucks haul the thing to a yard and they have to keep the EVs 50 feet away from anything else because they may spont spontaneously reignite and continue the thermal fire, thermal runaway on the batteries. Because you got all those little cells in it, those little batteries. It's not just, it's just a, it's just like a bunch of those little, they look like double A batteries, but bigger, right? all lined up in there and it's just it's kind of crazy uh then you have hertz dumping here let's show you that hertz article this that's an eye opener here is hertz who actually use these cars these teslas probably the best of breed right tesla's the best of breed ford chevy and all these other rivian and all this other crap came into the market and made crappy products and basically uh marred or marked the image of uh, evs as crappy uh, they made crappy products, and Tesla now is guilty by association. Sure, the Tesla truck is a turd. It came out, and it does look like his kid designed it. Uh, and there's so many problems with this thing. It's like, oh, my God. Um, it's so embarrassing. And then they just laid off 14,000 people. So what is going on, man? Uh, where is it? It was uh, execs are bailing on the company. Let's see. I have no idea what's going on. Kathy Wood, she kind of creeps me out a little bit. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't trust her. I think there's some, I don't know. I just, I just don't trust what she does with her uh, company and what stock she buys. I don't know. There's just a weird feeling there. Uh, let's see. Where is a oh, Hertz? Hertz is done gambling with EVs. It took a first quarter 195 million hit on Teslas that just keep losing value. Yeah. They saw the light right away. They're unmaintainable. Uh, people did not want to rent them. And, uh, you know, just the charging, the maintenance and all this crap. The guy said, what a big freaking mistake. And he, he was smart. Good for him. He pulled the plug before it got too bad. And uh, now you can go on freaking online and you can buy these damn Model 3s for under 20K. If you really want a Tesla, you can get them dirt cheap right now. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'd get one. Because then you got to factor in how much time is left on the battery pack. And that's going to cost you 20,000 bucks to replace. Yeah, I don't know. And then you got to probably have a 50 amp service hooked up to your house, an outlet to charge your vehicle if you have a house, or you got to go find a charging station. It's just a p p in the butt, pain in the pain in the butt. So yeah. All right, what else is going on? Uh, yeah, we talked about energy. We talked again about the various methods to get into Bitcoin and the uh, definite avenues of choice. And I prefer a Roth IRA, Roth and or IRA because you don't have to worry about the tax crap. Except when you take out the required minimal distribution on your uh, IRA or Roth, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Roths are wonderful vehicles. I'm a vehicles to use for financial investments. Uh, yeah, until the government destroys those, which they probably will shortly. They just hate the fact that us, us peasants can make money tax-free. We did pay tax on our money, but we can make more with investing. And then they actually hate that. They want to take all your money. So you got to be, I don't know, look at the Roth. It's a good way to do some of these trading. Again, you won't be able to touch your money unless you're 59 and a half. Uh, so you got to think about too. But again, you're building wealth for the future. And if you're lucky to live long enough, you get to maybe tap into some of that money. Let's see. Yeah, if you do these trades in a regular account, you're, you got to keep track of all the short-term cap gains. And it's a pain to butt. You'll end up owing quite a you know nice little chunk of change. If you make 10,000 bucks, you got to pay whatever your tax bracket is on the uh, short-term capital gain. Is it 15% or I can't remember. 
but something to consider. Always consider the tax man. But uh, again, you still have more money in your pocket than you did before, even though he's uh, he has his hand out for his chunk of change. You know, you take all the risk, and then he takes part of your reward. It just it's just crazy. It's almost theft. Uh, let's see, TRMD is a shipping thing. I got out of that. That was one I made money on. It had a nice yield. It tanked. Now it's kind of inching back up. So I had it up here, made some money, then it tanked. It's very, it's very spotty like that. Very, oh, what do you call it? Reactive to obviously what's going on in the Middle East. But again, if you know what's going on in the Middle East and you track these shippers, you can probably buy it for two days, make some bucks, dump it, get out, or hold it for a month, make 16%. Hoping that it doesn't tank. You know, there's all there's high dividend shit out there, but you really just gotta be careful. You can still lose your core investment, even though you're making a dividend yield. Yeah. But with stuff like this XLE ETF, this should be a good long haul for a while. Look at that. Nice steady growth up. Not too bad. You get a three percent dividend. Again, they buy things like Exxon. They buy so if you don't want to just buy Exxon, you can buy these things, and Exxon gives you the three percent yield as well. So you can tap into this and boom, you got an ETF and you're covering lots of the energy companies. And if you go click on it, ah, let's do it. Come on, we're here. Bum, bum, bum. Because all this money is going to be rolling into energy, right? Commodities and energy. Tech is dying. I think Google beat estimates because that was just leftover residual stuff. Uh, let's see where we can get their holdings at here. Here we go. So if you go to the Yahoo page, click on the research, uh, you just go to Yahoo Finance, finance.yahoo.com. Again, I hate their site from history of using it from years and years ago, but uh, they got a good financial page. Uh, let's see, Exxon, they hold, Chevron, Conoco, I don't know any of these other ones, Marathon, I know, Philips, of course. Oh, Valero, good. I used to own, so yeah, I used to own Valero. And I still own Exxon, but it's nice to have an ETF because they just—it's like an index fund in a way. It just buys the core ones, and their big stake is the top two, Exxon and Chevron. So not too shabby, and they're 100% energy. So it tells you what sector weightings they are, which is kind of cool. Uh, da, 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 da. okay. I think of course all the news crap. I mean, could reach. Uh, risk top takeaways. Uh, we're it's just all this bullcrap headings, man. Just I don't know. It can really drive you nuts reading some of this stuff. Anyway, that's all we got today, man. I just wanted to post out there what I'm up to again. Did my little rest in peace CPU mining because there's just no profitability in it. Zerg pull kind of screwed me over. Uh, on thirty bucks a Bitcoin, my little CPU has worked so hard for that too. It just irked me now. I can keep mining, but the payout I'll never get there. It's like they keep moving the goalposts, and that kind of what bugs me about them. Uh, all right, guys, go forth, do great things. Let me know what you're up to. Are you moving into energy? Are you doing any day trading? Or are you just going to get the hell in cash and watch the uh, collapse happen? And probably end of, let's see, probably end of the summer, probably right before the election, because uh, there's strategy to having it crash to whoever gets in that office. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, it's not going to look good, guys. Everyone's getting laid off. And all, all across the whole board from Tesla to uh, Starbucks to Amazon. Uh, people are not going to get these jobs back that are making 150, 200,000 a year. They're not getting those types of jobs anymore. People are going to go part time, work multiple part time jobs. It's pretty bleak. It is bad. I think we're back. This is done. I mean, it's, we're going to have, a, I think, a 10 year span of what is the lost decade based on the uh, stupid, the stupid idiots in Washington running this country into the ground on purpose. It's just sad. It's sad to see, man. It is really sad. But anyway, that's where we're at. You can monetize it too if you just learn how to do it. You know, follow the money. Where does the money move? The money moves from tech to maybe bonds or and or probably or uh, energy. So it looks like it's moving into energy because we can look at Exxon. Let's go back. This is too much fun. Stream of conscious videos are usually the best because most you can pick out little nuggets of information that help you. Look at Exxon, man. Just blammo, man. Kicking, kicking it all the way up. Nice little growth up. Can't go wrong with that. And that's why I like this XLE ETF because it holds the majority, 23% of Exxon and with Chevron. And it, it, I don't know. You still get the 3% yield. 
So it's, it might be a good long-term play. Uh, I've had Exxon since, oh my God, forever. Over 20 years. I bought it as my first drip dividend reinvestment plan and just constantly compounded, reinvested those dividends and a little snowball effect. So it's a money generator for me right now. In addition to the stock price going up, I get quarterly dividends, which uh, I can either take and pay out or just keep reinvesting. So there's something to think about that too. Let dividends be another income, income source for you. Uh, but I don't know, with the collapse coming up, I'm just weary to get into anything. One of the things you can look at is SCH, eh, SCHD Schwab's Dividend Equity ETF. It, it's been through some issues lately, but uh, you get 3% on that. But they also hold many of the dividend companies. If you don't want to hold, own, eh, hold them individually, you can go buy this ETF. <clears throat> and let's see what their holdings are. Let's just click on Oh, wait. There we go. These are the top 10 holdings of SCHD, uh, TXM, BMY, LMT. These are all, these are all dividend paying companies. Yeah, I've actually held, this is funny. Of these on here, I probably held 80% of these listed individually, which is fine. Pepsi's a good one, man. Pepsi's a good one. But geez, and I'm thinking, wait, I can just buy a freaking ETF and, uh, be good you know i don't like pfizer for obvious reasons but uh yeah not a bad option to look at an etf schwab q1 etf assets jump seven percent a rising market i still yeah i'm just gonna hesitate i'm gonna wait for the um, global apocalypse of economic disaster coming <laughs> and then see what's gonna happen that's gonna be beautiful i think oh man q4 this year election everything's coming to a head it's gonna be interesting if you guys know better, post below. What are you doing? Are you buying gold? Are you going to money markets? Are you buying Tesla? Do <laughs> you think Tesla's going to go back up to $400 a share? No, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. All right, guys, I'm out. Long video. Uh, yeah, talk to you later. Boom. Stop recording.